More often than I personally enjoy, I tend to find myself laying in bed at night and staring at the ceiling or listening to music before finally falling asleep after a few hours of just laying there. <clears throat> and as many of you know, I have pretty red eyes, so uh, that, plans, that gets plenty of laughs and jokes and stuff like that. But when it all comes down to it, a lot of the reason is because of my lack of sleep. And throughout my life, I have struggled to really get good sleep, fall asleep fast, and stay asleep. So with this project, we were given the opportunity to pick something we were passionate about and learn and grow our knowledge about it. So I chose to hope to find part of a reason as to why I may not sleep as well. To bring it down to a more specific point, I decided to focus more on a big part of everyone's life so it could relate to not only myself, but everyone else as well. And I chose your diet just because uh, obviously it's a big part of anyone's diet, or I mean life. I decided to focus on bigger factors such as how your food affects your brain, uh, like what it does, and not only your brain but your body as well to maybe get an idea as to how that could affect the way you're sleeping and the mindset that you have while you're sleeping. I also asked myself what happens while we sleep and why do we sleep so that I could know what's going on while I actually sleep. And then finally I did a short little experiment for myself. <laughs> did you know that the average American eats about 2,000 pounds of food a year? That averages out to about five and a half pounds a day, so obviously it's a very big part of our life. With that being said, I tended to focus, or I went to focus, as I said, on how it affects your brain. While you're eating stuff, what does it do to your body and your brain and everything else? In an article written by Gary L. Wink, who is a professor of psychology and neurology at the University of Ohio State, he separates foods into three different categories. In the very first category, it is foods we tend to eat most often and consume in high doses, such as sugars and coffee or caffeine. These are said to have almost immediate effect and have either positive health benefits or negative health benefits depending on how much we consume. These can affect us by giving us obviously jitters and allowing us to focus more. <clears throat> but this category is foods that tend to take one to two days or more to really start to get into an effect in our body. These foods are high in amino acids and are, bagel, are foods such as bagels, potatoes, and rice. These are said to help our transmitter system within our brain increase capability and increase uh, consistency as we eat them. And the final category within Wink's uh, article is um, what he calls lifetime foods, and they're called this because they obviously are capable of affecting us for lifelong situations or at least for a long time as they enter our body. These are high in uh, antioxidants, and they allow us to strengthen us. And these consist of foods such as fruits, vegetables, fish, and spices. The next major set of questions I asked were, why do we sleep, and what is going on while we're sleeping? To answer these questions, I turned to the help of the uh, National Sleep Foundation, and they found that there are, uh, while we are asleep, our brain is equally as active as we are during our waking period, which to me, I definitely thought while we were awake, it would be definitely more active. But while we're asleep, it is processing data, storing data, and processing memories and deciding whether to fit into long-term, short-term memory. And while we're sleeping, our body is also resting from our hard day and restoring itself. So all our muscles are working themselves back to normal and everything else. They also said that uh, there are four stages while we're sleeping. Within the first stage, you are in a very light state, and this is when you're most likely to be waking up the easiest. You also have many muscle contractions, and that is why you tend to feel like you're falling, and that is when you basically jolt yourself awake. 
uh, in the next state, there is um, your eyes tend to stop moving, and they just rest, and you're at rest, and your body begins to prepare for deep sleep by slowing your brain waves to a minimum and having more bursts of brain waves rather than one solid brain wave. And then your body temperature cools and your heart rate slows as well. In stage three, you begin your deep sleep phase. This is when most people experience parasomnia <coughs> effects, such as sleepwalking, talking in your sleep, and night terrors. These usually happen between non-rapid eye movement and rapid eye movement sleep. Rapid eye movement sleep is brain waves that mimic the activity of what is going on. This is usually when you tend to dream the most as well. As your eyes are moving back and forth, they're reoccurring activities from throughout the day or whatever dream you're having, they're basically following along. Finally, in the fourth stage, your brain tends to slow down and it begins producing delta brain waves extremely slow, more methodic brain waves, <coughs> sorry, more methodic brain waves that just kind of flow and are very smooth. Having researched all of this, I found all the basics and I decided to produce my own experiment by taking three subjects over a couple week period and following their diet, as in what they ate, what they drank, when they did all this, and then having them measure their sleep through applications like Sleep Cycle and then a Fitbit. Something interesting that I was able to find was that the more someone tended to eat meat, and especially red meat, you slept a little worse, and especially at dinner time or later, versus one of my subjects went vegeta vegetarian for a whole week and they slept pretty nicely throughout the whole week or at least a lot smoothly than the other subjects did that week. So for example, this one on the left, this person consumed uh, elk steak and potatoes for dinner and they obviously, they fell asleep pretty quickly but they struggled to keep in that deep sleep phase and this is the application sleep cycle by the way. Uh, this person had pasta salad and water for dinner, and they were able to fall asleep and then stay within that deep sleep phase throughout the night. <clears throat> Other examples of similar things that I found throughout my experiment were that obviously the later you ate, the uh, more it affected you negatively because just it's processing still, everything is going on. Like uh, on that last slide, I can go back. this person ate dinner at 7.30, and that person ate dinner at 6.15. So the later it was, the worse you also slept. The earlier it was, the better you slept. What I was looking for was something very specific and less diverse than what I really found. But in the end, a great quantity of what I was looking for, I was able to find in a good, like, a good state and I was able to see what I was looking for and find what I was looking for as well, at least a main idea of it. And no matter what I felt and what I found, I was able to keep in mind what was going on. I was able to basically locate some specific targets, such as the red meat, that may negatively affect me if I eat them after, say, 5 o'clock. Uh, and either way, in the end, when it comes down to it, Sleep may be just sleep, but for me, sleep really goes beyond the bedsheets.